An important anomaly in expected utility theory concerns the level of risk aversion required to explain observed behavior. People reject many small-scale bets. The crux of the anomaly is that if we are expected utility maximizers, rejection implies that we would reject some highly favorable larger-scale bets so favorable almost no one would reject them. Consider the following one-off bet involving the flip of a coin. Head, you win $110. Tail, you lose $100. Suppose you reject, you would not be alone in doing this. There is ample evidence that people reject favorable low-stakes bets, even when they have material wealth. Barberis et al. 2006 described an experiment where they offered a 50-50 bet to win $550 or lose $500 to a group of wealthy experimental participants. These participants included clients of a bank's private wealth management division, with a median wealth above $10 million. 71% of the private wealth clients turned down the bet. Under the axiom of diminishing marginal utility, we could conclude that you rejected it as you are risk averse. However, the minimum utility function curvature required to reconcile an expected utility maximizer declining bets of this nature when you hold any material level of wealth implies that you would reject immensely favorable bets. Examples in Rabin, 2000, and Rabin and Thaler, 2001, illustrate this. Suppose a person who acts consistent with expected utility theory always turns down a 50-50 bet to win $110 or lose $100, whatever their wealth. That person will also turn down a 50-50 bet to win $1 billion, lose $1,000. Another expected utility maximizer turns down a 50-50 bet to win $11, lose $10 at all levels of wealth. That person will turn down any 50-50 bet where they could lose $100 no matter the upside. At face value, that is ridiculous. But that is the crux of the argument. Turning down a low-value bet with a positive expected value implies that the marginal utility of money must decline quickly for small changes in wealth. Rejection of a low-value bet to win $110 or lose $100 would lead to absurd responses to higher-value bets. This leads Rabin, 2000, to argue that risk aversion or the diminishing value of money has nothing to do with the rejection of low-value bets. The intuition behind the rejection of small-scale bets leading to the rejection of immensely favorable bets is as follows. Suppose we have an expected utility maximizer with a weakly concave utility curve. That is, they are risk-neutral or risk-averse at all levels of wealth. If we drew their utility curve, it would always be increasing at a constant or decreasing rate depending on where you were on the utility curve. This person rejects a 50-50 bet to gain $150, lose $100. I have chosen this size bet so I can draw this visually to scale and make the point clear. The argument follows the same logic for a win $110, lose $100 bet. We also assume this person would reject the bet regardless of their level of wealth at the time the bet was offered to them. I can plot this on a chart. I will develop this chart step by step so that you can understand each element. In this figure, the horizontal axis is wealth and the vertical axis is utility. I have marked the current wealth, W, and utility of that person's wealth, U of W. I can then mark the two possible outcomes of the bet, the gain of $150, W plus 150, and the loss of $100. W minus 100. The utility of each outcome will be a point on these vertical lines. The expected value of the bet is a gain of $25. That is also marked. As the person rejected the bet, the expected utility of the bet must be less than or equal to the utility of current wealth. The point on the vertical line at W plus 25 where I mark expected utility must be level with or below the point on the vertical line at W where we mark current utility, U of W. 
I have placed a dot on the W plus 25 line in this figure, indicating the highest that the expected utility can be. The expected utility of the bet is the probability weighted utility of each of the two possible outcomes. Therefore, if I draw a line between the utility of each outcome, that line will pass through the expected utility of the bet. I have now added a line in between the utility for the two possible outcomes, with the expected utility of the bet on that line, or more specifically, in the middle of the line as each outcome has probability 50%. We now have three points on the utility curve, current wealth and their utility if the person lost or won the bet. As the person is risk averse at all levels of wealth, we know that all parts of the utility curve are at a minimum weakly concave. We can therefore draw on the chart part of the utility curve as the least risk averse they could be while still rejecting the bet. This is drawn in the solid black line. From the rejection of the bet, we know that u of w plus 150 minus u of w is less than or equal to u of w minus u of w minus 100. This means that u value each dollar between w and w plus 150 on average by at most 100 150 ths or two thirds as much as you value each dollar on average between w and w minus 100. We can see this in the slope of the two black lines forming the part of the utility curve we have drawn. The second part has two-thirds the slope of the first. Further, by weak concavity, we can say that you value your W plus 150th dollar at most two-thirds as much as you value your W minus 100th dollar. The relative value of each dollar has declined by one-third over the span of $250. Let us now consider what would happen if this person had $250 more wealth. That is, they have W plus 250. They are then offered the same bet. We have assumed that they will reject the bet at all levels of wealth, so they will also reject at this wealth. We can, therefore, infer another piece of the utility curve, or, more specifically, a curve for the least risk averse they could be. I have marked in the chart the utility of their wealth, the highest the expected utility of the bet can be if they reject the bet, and the utility of the two possible outcomes of the bet. The next section of solid black line represents another part of the utility curve that is at the minimum risk aversion they could be while still rejecting the bet. Iterating the previous calculations, I can say that they will weight their W plus 400th dollar only two-thirds as much as their W plus 150th dollar. This means they value their W plus 400th dollar only two-thirds squared or four-ninths as much as their W minus 100th dollar. Or put another way, over the span of $500, the relative value of each dollar has declined by five-ninths. As we infer additional pieces, we can see in the chart that this person rapidly declines in the rate at which they place utility on further wealth. The increase in slope for each additional sum becomes less and less. Over time, the slope approaches a horizontal asymptote, effectively a cap on the level of utility they can achieve, however wealthy they may become. Keep iterating in this way and you end up with some ridiculous results. You value the $2,500 above your current wealth only 2% as much as your last current dollar of your wealth, two-thirds to the power of 10, reducing by a constant factor of two-thirds every $250. This is an absurd rate of discounting. Taking this iteration to the extreme, it doesn't take long for additional money to have effectively zero value. We see the utility curve approaching a limit. Any gain of money from W plus 3,000 upwards is valued at almost nothing, meaning a gain beyond that level, no matter how large, could compensate for the possibility of losing $1,000.